I have something very, very cool to show you guys. I am very, very pleased to announce that the EF is finally on the ground. I mean, look at this. I never thought I'd see the day where this thing has an AU subframe and it's sitting on the ground. Now there's still a lot more work to do, but the fundamentals of the AU subframe swap are finished. Everything is drilled, everything is modified. All I gotta do now is put the crush tubes in, tack them in, tack the nuts in on the top of the frame rails for the studs, close up all the holes that I made to drill and everything like that. So I'll give you guys a quick look whilst the car is on the ground. But basically, as you can see, this is being held in right now with two studs at the back and two studs at the front. So after gently removing the subframe for the very last time, we started by removing everything around the engine bay to prep it for its next stage of restoration. And that was shaving and painting the bay. Makes you wonder, how long is a piece of string when it comes to project cars? Wait. Whilst I'm here, I've actually done a little bit of body work as well because whoever owned this car before obviously didn't give a fuck. And there were lots and lots of dents in the rad support from when the motor was swapped because the original motor that came in the car spanned a bearing. This is what it looks like at the moment. It used to be full of dents, but it's all going to look mint. I'm very excited. <laughs> Good news! All the crush tubes are in. Now all we gotta do is weld up those plates that we cut out a couple of videos ago. So Ollie's just sprayed like a few layers of primer on because it's gonna be covered anyway. It doesn't really matter how it looks. As long as it doesn't rust, this is uh, exciting stuff. Shaving engine bays, flapper discs. I'm gonna grab two for good measure. Sometimes when I'm working on this car, I swear it's like one step forward, two steps back. But I think finally we're in that one step forward mark. Hopefully it's just gonna be steps forward from now on. I think if my calculations are correct, everything that needs to be taken off and everything that needs to be disassembled has been done. And so now we can finally get to putting everything back together for the last time, basically making it look like a car again. Because at the moment, as you can see, it's not only not looking like an XR6, it's not even looking like a GLI. So this here is what a shaved strut tower, I guess, wheel well area looks like. And that's what a non-shaved area looks like. This one is obviously going to be a little bit more work because under the battery tray, they uh, all these E-series have a tendency of rusting because it's just a tray welded in, so water can get trapped underneath. But on this side, Ollie has done a fantastic job shaving everything. Also, we've started welding up plates, as you can see. I've been busy as well. All the plates that can be welded up have been welded up. So yesterday, I've spent most of the day prepping all the areas for welding and stuff like that. So I welded up this one and also the same on the other side. Please excuse my welding skills are not the best and this MIG isn't the best, but as long as it's structural and it penetrated properly into the metal, I mean, there's a quick test you can do. You just give it a knock. If it sounds solid, then you've done a good job. But if it sounds a little bit tinny, then, you know, the penetration isn't very good, but I think we've penetrated it quite well. So flapper discs are your best friend for getting rid of welds and making surfaces flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten out all those welds, make it look like nothing ever happened there. Well, I'm gonna try to at least. Obviously there's gonna be some indication that people have been there, but as long as it looks good and it's structural, I don't really care that much because it's in the wheel well anyway. And then I'm gonna start taking out all the seam sealer on that side and prepping that area to get shaved down. A lot of work, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Progress has been happening. I am in charge of putting together the engine whilst Ollie 
is working his magic in the engine bay. As you guys might have seen in the previous clip, we have this one basically completely done and Ollie's just working around this one. There's a lot of welding and a lot of bogging and a lot of primering and sanding involved. I'm not a very patient person, which is why Ollie is doing it. You like doing this shit, don't you, Ollie? It's satisfying. You find it satisfying, yeah. I, I don't, I find it the exact opposite. I find it infuriating. So I'm gonna be putting an engine together, which I haven't touched in about six months. I started off by flipping the motor upside down so I can get the bottom end ready for the sump to go on. I start off by using some brake cleaner and a razor blade to roughly get the surface to where I wanted it to be. And I finished off by running a brass wire wheel over the engine block to remove any other imperfections that it might have had. All right, I've been very busy. The bottom end is now cleaned up, ready for the sump to go on. So I've just laid out all of the sump bolts. Intex are interesting. I think barras are the same and they have bolts that go into the main caps. Those are the ones here. And then there are these tiny little ones that hold the main portion of the sump on. So these ones here goes along the perimeter and then the these ones go into the main caps, obviously right there. Sump is now done. I've uh, cleaned it up as best as I can. Everything is dry inside. I think yeah, it should be right. It's a bio-low engine anyway. Hopefully this outlasts the rods. I want to shoot a rod out of the block before the engine starts leaking, so. Let's get that on. I didn't want to take any chances of this intake leaking. So I applied sealant on the actual sump. Then I put the sump gasket on and then I applied even more sealant to the sump gasket. I placed it on the engine, torqued up all the little eight millimeter bolts to uh, whatever I felt like. And then I actually torqued up the main cap bolts to 60 Newton meters. I also made sure to apply sealant to the bolts that go into the main caps because I didn't want it leaking through there. Look at this. That's basically it. Then I can start bolting up all the accessories like the AC. Yes, we are running AC. Alternator, power steering pump, water pump, tensioner. And then when the engine bay is done, damn, look at this. That's, dang. That's looking very, very nice. Good job, Ollie. We will be painting the engine bay. Obviously, we're not gonna leave it primer gray, nardo gray, but that's why everything is out of the engine bay. Then that thing can go in. Instead of watching paint dry, I figured it was a good time to start cleaning up all the welds from when I welded in the plates that we initially cut out to put the crush tubes in. That would mean that it is the last step before we can put the subframe in for the very last time. And I hope it never ever has to come out again. Excuse me, I'm uh, perspiring a little bit. It's quite hot in Melbourne today, very humid. Nonetheless, that won't stop us here in the Pekin garage. So have a look at this. Once again, I don't know how many times I've said, have a look at this in the past like five videos, but have a look at this. It's in again for the 15th time, 15th and final time, I hope, because this time I have dropped in some studs. So we're using a variety of studs. We're going to see which one snaps first and kills me. And then we'll revisit later and we'll review what we need to change in the next build. Once I dropped all the studs through, I got myself some washers and some nylock nuts. Nylock nuts are actually used on the factory subframe as well. So I figured why not employ the same logic there. Threaded them on loosely by hand and then tacked the studs on top of the frame rail so we can actually tighten it down properly. at this it's in it's fully bolted in just got these two last things to weld in first we need to clean everything in the engine bay because it's covered in grinding dust it's covered in bog dust it's just a mess look at this all of that crap there so we're about to roll it out for the first time
Well, never thought I'd see the day. On its wheels, it's got an AU subframe and the steering is very loosely connected. And I mean loosely, I mean very loosely. Mm -hmm. 